Caltech say after this event? Really, I heard so many incredible stories, so many incredible and passionate people, so many fantastic thoughts that have been presented here, unlike anywhere where I really am. And I have to really think of Lodovica, Rossi Perini, because to put together such an event is not just to put some people together, but it's an ethical, ethical effort to create something better in this world and to bring people together. And since we are in Rome, really the greatest city in the world, I think it's appropriate to remember somebody who I really admire, a great thinker, a great philosopher, Sigmund Freud, who, when thinking about the human mind, thought that the human mind actually resembles Rome. He thought that the human mind is like Rome because on top of it, you see what is there, but you also see the ruins of the past. But the ruins of the past are only the surface of the mind because below those ruins are layers and layers of creation and destruction, which also means rebirth and resilience. And I think that thought is so deep in Rome that it is appropriate that the idea of rebirth come also from Rome and from the history of Rome. And it is not only Sigmund Freud. I think of another great thinker, actually the first architect to write a definitive book about architecture, is Vitruvius, Vitruvio. And where did, how, what did he say about the origins of architecture? He said that the origins of architecture had to do with a the fire. There was a fire. And because of the fire, people realized where they were and what it was. And it is true. The world is on fire. There are so many catastrophes. There are so many incredible problems. But at the same time, the idea of the human spirit, the idea of a soul, which is not frequently talked about, except maybe in another sphere of this town, that everyone has a soul, that there is a kind of eternity in a cross section of time that we can all experience. And I think that's what this event really is about. It is about bringing together really the capacity of people and to build together. And I say build together because to me, architecture is not just building a building, building a city, is the greatest symbol we all have because we all have the symbol that architecture gives us. The fact that we stand on this ground, on this earth, we have this sky, we have that horizon, we have a door that opens, we have a window, we have a view, we have a foundation. We have something beyond the foundation. Those are all words from construction, from architecture. And therefore, I am very interested in the fact that architecture, unlike almost everything else, science, politics, production of food, theology, everything has changed rapidly. But architecture is very, very slow. And I've asked myself, why is it so? Why is it that we have new sciences of the brain we have new biological science, we have genetic science, we have the astrophysics, we have atomic particle physics. But the physicists, the scientists, still live pretty much like people lived about 10,000 years ago. And that is the question. To what extent can we exploit the Earth? To what extent can we abuse the place that we have and still have a future? Now, because I'm an architect, and everyone in a way is an architect, building something better, I believe that we are all optimists. Because really, the only qualification you need to do architecture, it's not mathematics, and it's not knowledge, and it's not archeology, span and it's not drawing. It's the belief in future. It's the belief in a better future. That's the definition of optimism. And I always thought that you know, presidents, prime ministers, heads of countries, economists, central bankers, poets, musicians, artists, philosophers, can be pessimistic about the future, but never all of us as architects who are building a better future. Thank you.